Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your tea cups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey, you guys. I hope you guys are doing good today. So I want to come on and do a part two of the whole coronavirus situation. So it is so much information. It is just my mind has been spinning these last three days. And I want to kind of do a follow up. I want to talk about some more things I'm learning and the stuff that my tea sipper is, you know, sending to me on the low. So my tea sipper will be in this video again. We're going to go ahead and disguise their voice once more. OK, so. Basically, what happened is that three days ago, over the weekend, I posted that Boston got its first case of coronavirus. It's now up to eight in the United States, and the U.S. has officially declared it an emergency. So it took America long enough, but they have officially declared it an emergency. I believe it's a lot more than eight people who are affected. This situation is really scary, okay? So I want to come on here and just talk about it. Um, since then, it's just been a lot that's gone on. People were telling me to watch the movie Contagion. I went ahead and I watched it. It was so eerie how everything that's going on now, it, it was literally in Contagion. When I tell you, like, we live in a world where it's nothing but predictive programming, that certain people in shadowy positions are playing with the people. It also reminds me of the movie Resident Evil as well. So it's really scary. And then another thing that we talked about yesterday was people found an old Simpsons episode where they were talking about getting the coronavirus through the mail this time it wasn't from China it was from Japan so once again the predictive programming is real a lot of people say that the Simpsons predict a lot of stuff cartoons can't predict anything these are people putting these subliminal messages and future messages into the cartoons okay so I feel like a lot of this stuff may have been planned and the rabbit hole goes deep okay now, there's been a lot of people sending me uh, pictures of their Lysol bottle, Lysol wipes, and on the back it says, you know, uh, that it gets rid of the coronavirus. So a lot of people are like, well, hold up. If this is a new virus, how do they know about it because it's on the back of my Lysol? Well, what it is is that the coronavirus has been around for years. If you guys remember billionaire Bill Gates back in 2008, he put out a prediction that there's going to be a new virus and that over 30 million people will be killed. This is going to be the pandemic of our lifetime, okay? Check this out. Thank you of the basics ABCs of public health. All right, so you guys just saw that clip. So isn't that eerie that this is what's happening now? Okay, so I, I see a lot of predictive programming. We can even go back to the movie Outbreak that came out in 1995, okay? And the reason why I know a lot about viruses um, is because back when I was in high school, I did a paper on the Ebola virus. And back then it had broke out like that summer is really bad. And if you guys know anything about the Ebola virus, it's one of the worst viruses to catch. It's very easily spread and you end up bleeding from every orifice in your body. So your mouth, your nose, your eyes, your ears, and you just literally turn into like a pile of just, you know, deteriorating, like a deteriorating corpse. And it's so bad that the people who end up with the Ebola, they have to burn the corpses to save the other people. So I did a research paper on that back in high school. So I've always been interested and I've always had my ear to the streets when it comes to viruses, pandemics, things like that. So now let me explain to you guys. The reason why you guys are seeing the coronavirus on the back of Lysol cans and everything else is because the coronavirus has been around. The problem now is that this particular virus is a different strain. Our bodies have not, you know, our bodies cannot put up a defense mechanism towards a new virus that we've never been exposed to. So that is the problem. So people whose, you know, nieces or nephews or brother had coronavirus like in 2015, this is not the same strain. This is a whole new, more powerful strain. And it's very, very scary. I have one of my tea sippers who's a nurse. She lives in the States and she like sent me like 30 voicemails. She was really upset very high strung and I and I get and I get your passion sis I understand you being worried and concerned and I thank you for the voicemails but one of the things that she told me that I wanted to share with you guys is that once she's really upset that they allowed people to come to America from China after it was already declared an emergency in China. She felt like everything should have been shut down, you know, putting a, you know, a temperature gauge to somebody's forehead is not really determining if they had the virus. 
one thing that people need to know about this virus is that the virus can lay dormant in your body for up to two weeks, okay, where you feel fine. You're walking around, you're, you're, you're eating Chinese food, you're breakdancing, you're having a good old funky time. You don't feel none the wiser. And then, bam, two weeks later, you start getting sick, you start getting chills, and you find out you have the coronavirus. Well, in those two weeks, imagine how many people you've come across. You've gone to mall. You share soda with your kids. You kissed your husband. You kissed your wife. You shook in hands with strangers. So imagine how many people that that one person who had the coronavirus stirring up in their system and they had no idea how many people that they've been able to affect. So that's why she's really upset because she works in the healthcare field and she feels like at this point, she is being put at risk because there's people coming to these hospitals, they're sick, you know, they're coughing. It's already easy when you're a part of the hospital staff to get sick anyways. I don't care if you're the doctor, the nurse, the janitor, you know, the people who bring the food trays. The hospital is a dirty place. People are not there because they're well. They're there because they're sick. And she says even with the face mask, that's not necessarily going to help, you know, because they can still seep in through the sides of the mask, you know, unless you're wearing something that's completely medically sealed or, you know, like a gas mask, things can still seep in. So she's very, very concerned for her job because she doesn't want to go home and possibly infect her children. So I definitely understand the concern and worry. This is really scary. But one thing that she wanted me to let you guys know is that, one, it's very serious. And the way that it's spread, they weren't being super honest about it. They're making it look like, okay, well, somebody just coughs. <laughs> and it's in the air for like a few seconds. If you just happen to be there, you could catch it. What she's telling me is almost very similar to how you can catch Ebola. Basically, she's saying that this disease is so powerful that not only can you catch it by breathing it in and somebody coughs, but if somebody touches your skin who has it, you can get it with skin to skin contact. It can go through your ears, through your nose, basically any orifices of your body. If you're having sex with that individual, this is a virus that's very easily transmissible, okay? So that's what people need to realize. And I, you know, I don't want this to turn into a channel where I'm fear-mongering or trying to scare people, but I want to put the information out there. I want you guys to know how serious this is. And people are literally risking their lives to contact me and, and sneak me information that the Chinese government does not want out there. You know what I'm saying? They are lying to the people, and these people in China are risking their lives. It's very, very scary the things that are going on okay okay so I'm gonna be going back and forth between my phone so one of the things that me and my tea sipper um, discussed is that it's just been announced in China that there's a new strain now we all know h1n1 well now there's a h5n1 it basically it's a new bird flu outbreak and I'll show you videos later where you'll see them literally killing all these baby chicks and and grown chickens and they're putting them into holes and they're just burying them alive so it's, it's that real. There's something going on in China. I don't know if because China has a billion people, they feel like it's overpopulated, but I feel like they're trying to basically destroy the people of China, and I feel really bad for them, okay? On top of that, she also talked about a flu epidemic that happened last year, but it was called the African pig flu. And basically, at that point, the pork in China was, you know, basically tainted. People were getting sick, and they had to kill and slaughter a bunch of pigs. So that's going to be something that she's going to talk about um, in these voice chats, okay? And then another thing that gets discussed is she's talking. I'm just going to be showing you guys the clips of what she's talking about. Um, that hospital, the one that they were building in six days and people were praising them for, a lot of people feel like it's a FEMA death camp. Okay, let's keep that real to all the conspiracy theorists. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Um, and people are being welded into that hospital. The hospital literally looks like a jail. There's nothing comforting about this hospital. And not only are they locking people in, they're also now locking people in their apartments. And people are sneaking out videos to people in Hong Kong, China, because the people in mainland are so scared to post it. So people in Hong Kong are now posting these videos of people being welded into their apartments, you guys. This is really sick, okay? Another thing that's going on is, you know, you guys saw the funny video that I posted the other day about the package I got from overseas. I got it from China, from AliExpress. I had ordered some shirts, 
And when the package came, I was spraying it down with Lysol. You know, and I, and I was being funny. You, y'all know me. I'm a joker, okay? I joke and shit. So, you know, I was just making it a point, like, y'all be very vigilant of things coming from China. So a few American people were reaching out to their Chinese folks that they order stuff from. Because, you know, we built relationships with people in China. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of people in China that I'm very close with. And so we, you know, this person sent messages to her AliExpress people like, you know, I hope everything is okay. Be careful of the coronavirus. She sent it to two different people in two different providences in China. And she literally got back the same exact message. Okay. That's like me uh, emailing an eBay seller in Jersey and emailing an eBay seller in like Cali. And they sent me back the same, you know what I mean? message it's like wait y'all don't even know each other why y'all replying back the same so they feel like the chinese government is forcing a lot of these people these factory workers to put it out there to people around the world that oh everything is okay keep ordering because so the girl says i told two sellers on aliexpress the same thing that i hope they don't get infected isn't it weird that their answers are the same Note that the two sellers are quite far away from each other. Is the government controlling this platform too? What the fuck? So this is what she says. So she says, oh, that's lovely. Thank you so much. I hope you and your crew don't get infected by coronavirus. Stay safe. So the seller replies back and they say, hello, friend. Thank you very much for your concern. The main epidemic situation is only in Wuhan, which is under control. The government is actively taking many measures to deal with it. Other cities have little impact. I believe it will be restored soon. We ship from Gangyudong. At the same time, the warehouse and the equipment of the logistics line have been strictly sterilized daily according to requirements. Please rest assured to buy. Thank you. The other person says this. Dear friend, don't worry. We will solve it for you. Your order has been sent before the shipping is out of control. Could you please kindly check if the address and postcode is okay? So she writes, yes, it's correct. And thank you. Stay safe. I heard it's pretty bad there with the coronavirus. And that seller from a whole nother providence basically writes the same thing I just read. The main epidemic situation is only in Wuhan, which is under control, etc. So something ain't clean in the buttermilk. I don't give a damn what nobody says. Something is not clean. Something is going on here. And it's really, really scary. You know, all the stuff that's going on and how the Chinese government is not being, you know, just being honest with their people about the situation. So now I'm going to go ahead and play you guys the, the audio DMs. And of course, the voice will be distorted of my tea sipper. Go ahead and check this out. And I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. You um, look up the map of China and look up Hubei and... Hunan. These are two provinces that are right next to each other. They just found H5N1, which is basically like almost H1N1, which was one of the really bad, the bird flu basically, that was just decimating people over here a few years ago, especially in Hong Kong. And that's why there's this push to try to close the borders. The doctors are going to be um, apparently in Hong Kong saying that, that if Terry, uh, Miss Carrie Lam doesn't close the borders, they're all going to walk off the job. Um, and that goes back to my comment on, you know, what I was saying about, you know, not facing your enemy head on, but to try to destabilize the economy, the society with conflict and some viral bio uh, terror type situation. It's real. So let me drop something in here because um, it's a lot. It's a lot out here. And I, like I said, I don't want to inundate you with stuff, but um, I'll send you some stuff here that I've been getting from people in Hong Kong. People are scared to post because... You know, they're not going to post on Chinese social media. So people are doing it out of mainland China. And that's how people are kind of being able to get information funneled back in. Good evening. Good morning. Um, yeah, it is getting crazier. And like I said, it, the rabbit hole continues to dive deeper. Now, um, like I said, I don't want to inundate you with a lot, but if you're going to do a number two, let me give you a little bit more information. I'm going to go back to the year 2019, which was not that far away, but something that I don't think got a lot of play in the news in the United States is what they were calling the African swine flu or uh, the pig killing disease. That was decimating the... Um, pig market here in China and as many people do know pork 
rules the day in Asia. Many dishes are made of pork. Now, when I started hearing about this, I'm like, well, I don't eat pork. I don't care. But what I do realize is the economic connections to it. When pork prices rise in a country like China, it makes people nervous um, because that means that prices are going to begin to climb in other areas. And so what the Chinese government does is they have like reserves of pork all over different provinces, state owned, in massive freezes. And when pork prices go up, they put the pork on the market. Well, last year was really difficult because pigs all over the country were dropping dead of this, what they wanted to call African swine flu. So I'm going to go ahead and show you some articles that you can take a look at just to confirm the realities of this. And then I'll come back with something additional. So my thought is you had pork from 2019, you got chickens in 2020, and you got the coronavirus. What? Like, what is going on? What is going on here? That is something that we all, I think, need to really look into more significantly. Back uh, into the Middle Kingdom in relationship to some of the responses. There have been videos of people being welded into their apartment so they can't leave. There are videos of the internals of that hospital that everybody was talking about. Like, oh, they're going to build it in six days. Well, from the insides of it, it looks like a prison. People cannot get out. They're locked in from the inside, but they can only be let out from the outside. So I'm going to drop those in as well. Also, we found out today that now the disease is not only spread through droplets, so we've been running around with goggles and face masks and found out that really for the people who are not sick, it ain't really helping. It's the people who are sick that, it, you know, it helps to keep the spread down. But now we find that it can be spread through the digestive system. So what happens if you get somebody who's not washing their hands clean? And if anybody has ever been to China, there's one thing that I have to say, they're not particularly hygienic. They pick their nose in public, they and spit on the ground and just and not the type of western standards of hygiene we are accustomed to and these are things that make the disease spread so now we have to worry about it being in our digestive system not the sneezing or the coughing that is emitted into the air this is next level do notice that a lot of the posts have been about oh don't alipay the aliexpress don't buy you know from china and there was one girl who had posted in a group saying that she had contacted two sellers on aliexpress or a taobao is known here and um was you know you know oh be careful we hope you know you guys are doing well and from two separate sellers she got the same response so it looks like the party is definitely trying to organize one message going out to the world to stand in unison anything that deviates from the party rule and the party platform there are serious reprimands and serious consequences to that there's a lot more out there i'm just gonna have to give it to you in pieces i know that you are going to do your due diligence and do your homework on this so you can put out a clear concise and authentic message not to fear monger not to scare people but just to make people aware um probably the majority of your subscribers are maybe people who may not really have access to the information and, and people need to just pay attention as not say stay wise and move above it so i'll end here and um We'll definitely um, reach back if there are more things out there that I think you need to be aware of. Do take care.
So this is the last bit of information I want to put out there that just scared the hell out of me. And basically these are people in mainland China, but they're like in the outskirts, okay? They're like in like the, the woods, in the village somewhere. They're not in the main city. And you have an older woman and you have an older man and they're just out and about. They're not even wearing a face mask. And there's literally like these drones that are watching these people in China and the voice comes out and they're like, Auntie, what are you doing out here? You're not supposed to leave your house. Where's your face mask? Like it is so creepy and she's an older woman so she's looking around like oh my god who said that like she's freaked out like this was like the creepiest thing to watch and this is happening all over china but they don't want this to get out they are watching their citizens and they're literally chastising them in the streets if they're out and about if they're not wearing a face mask if this isn't some new world order type shit i don't know what is check this out Dangyo 别笑了迎面走过来的美女别再出来了啊 Alright, so you guys just saw that video and like I said, it's just extremely creepy Now another thing um, the Chinese are not being honest about the death toll, okay? They're not being honest. They're hiding it. And now what's coming out is that basically people who are dying from the coronavirus, because so many people are dying so quickly, that China is now banning funerals and they're burning these bodies. And people are recording the Chinese government sneakily, you know, hurrying, getting dead bodies out of apartments and they're taking them to the crematory to cremate the bodies. <laughs> Yo 我昨天哪有跟社区所不要帮妈妈送到协和卡要求支付方为行政长
不是我们不愿意掏钱确诊呐？来来来，我到老家你把抖音打开，快过来！老子一发抖音都发到人身后打穿，老子把门砖搞不的要死了，都把那人关了。我妈不能熬，啊！我妈不能熬，我他妈是为啥呢？只敢拉一条，大家都吵架还不行了还？叫个人办事下来！我跟你讲，我钱子都赚了。你还要吃大功的，我不想回来了。高尔夫目前官方没有确认病例，明白吗？要哪个地方会通知呢？会官方发布？你看公官方通告啊，没有官方通告不能随便发布，一旦发布造成社会影响的，我们将追究法律责任。嗯。啊，现在我们要求你立即纠正你前面的朋友圈，一个是删除，第二个你再发朋友圈，对前面你发的信息进行纠正，啊。怎么就这样？你就说。So it's a lot of just really, really fishy, horrible things going on. 是你不知道我在武汉，你找我干啥？你找我配合你啥？问你在武汉住在哪儿？我住在朋友家里。然后现在他们找我爸妈谈话去了。昨昨天还是前天找我爸妈谈话去了。我是害怕。我前面是病毒，我后边是中国的法律和行政力量。但是我会振作起来，只要我活在这个城市，我会继续做我的报道。我只说我看见的，我听见的。妈逼，我连死都不怕。Now, um, when this virus first started, there was a Chinese doctor. His name is Dr. Li Wenlang, and he's basically blowing the whistle, saying this is bigger than what it is. People are getting sick. He had gotten coronavirus as well because the government was lying to the hospital staff. And so once his video got out, the government went to his house. They found out who he was. They made him sign paperwork, and they basically said if he says anything else to the media or on social media, he'll be arrested. So now CNN has gotten involved. This poor doctor is literally almost dying in the hospital. He can barely breathe, but they were able to, you know, copy interview with him on basically his deathbed because, you know, CNN has no shame, honey. Anyways, y'all, y'all go ahead and check this video out and I'm gonna come back with the rest of my commentary. In a matter of days, Dr. Lee Wen Leong went from treating patients to becoming one. The 34-year-old ophthalmologist diagnosed Saturday with the Wuhan coronavirus. But if action had been taken when he and others started sounding alarms, the severity of the outbreak might have been understood sooner. <coughs> Struggling to communicate, Lee spoke with CNN briefly by phone. You can hear the hospital machines pulsing in the background. <laughs> It was back in late December when Lee first warned friends on WeChat about a SARS-like disease going around. Lee sent a group message saying that a test result from a patient quarantined at the hospital where he worked showed a patient had a coronavirus. But hours after hitting send, Wuhan City health officials tracked Lee down, questioning where he got the information. Within days, they closed the suspected source of the virus, this seafood market, and they announced the outbreak. But instead of being praised, Lee got a call from Wuhan City Police. With Lee coughing too much and breathing too poorly to speak by phone, we asked Lee by text, How did you feel when this happened? I felt a little afraid, afraid I would be detained, afraid my family would worry, Lee responded. He agreed to sign this document, admitting to spreading rumors online and severely disrupting social order. It reads, We want you to cooperate with the police and listen to our reminder and stop the illegal act. Can you do that? Lee answered, yes, I can. 
In the weeks that followed, the Wuhan Municipal Health Commission maintained that there was no obvious evidence for human-to-human -human transmission, no infection of healthcare workers, and that the outbreak was, in their words, preventable and controllable. And with that, the people of Wuhan continued about their normal lives. Then came a sudden jump in infections. China's central government took over, scrambling to contain a spreading virus with a rising death toll. Chinese state media first reported that Li was one of several whistleblowers silenced by police. Calls for Li and the others to be vindicated grew online. China's Supreme Court even weighed in, adding, quote, it might have been a fortunate thing if the public had listened to this rumor at the time. But for many, including Li and his parents, it was too late. They all contracted the coronavirus. Li is now fighting for his life, alone in quarantine, but online considered a hero. Tens of thousands praising his attempts to sound the alarm, ahead of what's become a global health emergency. After the Chinese Supreme Court made those comments in support of Li and the other whistleblowers, we did hear from Wuhan police. They released a statement essentially saying, look, the whistleblowers weren't fined and they weren't detained. They were simply questioned and let go. Now, we did also reach out, CNN did, to Wuhan police as well as the local health commission. Allison, they declined to comment. I saw that video and it's so heartbreaking. And this is one of the main reasons why people do not trust the Chinese government. Look how they treat their own people. These people are not even allowed to use regular social media apps. They got to do everything on WeChat because WeChat is censored and watched by the government. It's really scary what's going on over there. And part of me feels like even if this would have started with the wet markets and the bat soup and all that, I feel like there's something more sinister going on, okay? Um, they were even saying days before this, before the whole outbreak started, there was some type of celebration in China and there were like thousands of people who came to this celebration and there was all this free food and people were eating with their hands and sharing meals and sharing spoons and forks. The Wuhan government held a 100,000 person banquet where people all ate from the same dishes three miles from where the virus was confirmed to have come from. This is two days after 49 cases had been made public. And then a few days later, that's when the outbreak started. So it's like, was all of this planned? Isn't it interesting that they did this huge festival and then all of a sudden people started getting sick. And then when, doctor, when doctors were out here whistleblowing, the government tried to shut them down and, you know, make it look like they were just, you know, starting chaos. And now those same doctors are sick. And it's just so much information, you guys. It's really scary. But the main thing I can leave you with, because like I said, I don't want a fear monger. I just want you guys to be educated and to be smart and to be careful when traveling, you know, and especially if you live in a highly populated Asian area. And that does not make me racist to say this. I'll stop with the whole tease racist towards Asians. I'm not racist. I stated facts. A lot of Asians just eat weird stuff, okay? And that's fine. That's their culture. But what I'm saying is if you are like, if you live like near a Chinatown or, you know, a town where it's, you know, heavily populated with Asian people, and especially if they're coming from China, because remember, the U.S. just stopped allowing people to fly in from China just a few days ago. The, the virus stays in your body for 14 days before you even realize that you're sick. So some of those people are walking amongst us here in the U.S. So just be vigilant. If you're going to those Asian markets or those areas, you might want to wear a face mask. Hell, that's not racist. They're wearing face masks. They're trying to protect themselves. So why is it racist when people of other races say to wear a face mask in those particular areas? You got to protect yourself because at the end of the day, if you get sick with coronavirus, uh, they're not about to sing no song for you. They're, they're not going to care. You got to fight that shit on your own. So do whatever you can to keep yourself safe. Wash hands. If you're getting any packages, what the nurse told me is if you're getting any packages from Wish or AliExpress that you ordered a month ago, because everything takes a month to get here. So if you ordered it last month, hopefully everything was safe, you know, when they packaged it. But in the event, she says to soak everything in bleach. OK, the outside packaging, I mean, if it's clothing, you don't want to be bleach the clothing, but I'm talking about the bags that they come in, you know, wipe those down with bleach, with Lysol, spray stuff down, wash the clothing in hot water before wearing it. So that way it can kill the virus. I just say you can never be too careful. All my stuff I ordered, all that shit went right in the wash. OK, y'all not going to have coronavirus in my damn house. So it's just really scary. You guys stay vigilant, stay informed. Most importantly, Google, do your research. Don't just watch my video and take my damn word for it, honey, like LeVar Burton said on Reading Rainbow. Do your own research, okay? All the information that I'm putting out there that people are sending me, follow up on this information, research it, and make sure you guys are protecting your families.
period, point blank. There's a pandemic going on and all of these governments try to, you know, keep it hush hush and, and basically minimize it. And now we're seeing the effects of that. When I spoke on everything about a week ago, oh, you know, oh, well, I don't know. It's not a big deal. Then what happened? Two days later, they basically said that it's an epidemic. They're shutting down travel to and from Asia and that the U.S. is taking it seriously. But people have been online talking about the coronavirus as early as late December. So there's a lot of things that they're hiding from the people. And all this predictive programming, y'all better wake up. Everything's not a conspiracy. So I'm going to go ahead and get off the of camera and uh, go, you know, I got to go get my son from basketball practice. He's texting me. But you guys stay safe, stay vigilant, and stay well-informed. And send me anything y'all have, honey. DM it to me. Post the links in my, you know, Instagram because I read it all. So send me whatever links y'all have. And if I need to make a part three, I will make a part three. But I, I don't want this to turn into the coronavirus, you know, YouTube channel either, okay? But if I need to make one, if it gets even worse, I will make a part three. So you guys have a good evening. I will talk to you guys later. Bye. Hey, you guys. Good afternoon. So um, I know the video just ended. I've literally been editing this video since 10 o'clock this morning. It is now 1.14 p.m. And when I tell you I'm exhausted because I didn't even go to bed till three but that's a whole nother story so I just got done editing the video but in between editing the video I'm always looking up updated information on the coronavirus and what's going on just want to make you guys aware if you guys are not aware this is breaking news as of an hour ago okay this is a live update from CBS News and they are reporting that hundreds of more and they are reporting that hundreds more Americans evacuated from China as coronavirus death toll rises. So they're saying that they basically just flew in 350 Americans who just came from the epicenter, which is in Wuhan, China. They will be quarantined for 14 days, but even still... It just doesn't sit well with me. Their plane load of Americans evacuated from the outbreak zone in China is heading back to the U.S. And China is now coming under harsh criticism for the way it's handling that rapidly spreading coronavirus. Remy and Asensio reports tonight from Beijing. After an agonizing wait to be evacuated from Wuhan, the second group of Americans was screened on the ground before boarding the converted cargo plane. Priscilla Dickey is one of them. I'm looking forward to giving my mom a hug. I haven't seen her in five years, so. The flight will land in California, where passengers will be quarantined for 14 days. More State Department flights with evacuees will land at March Air Reserve Base and four other air bases. These include Camp Ashland in Nebraska, near a national quarantine center and biocontainment unit. Authorities are instituting a tough approach to contain the virus here. Social media posts show that this woman is said to have been arrested in a grocery store for refusing Using to wear a mask. This house was locked by authorities with the family inside. Still, life goes on here. A woman infected with coronavirus gave birth to a healthy baby girl in northeast China. The mother is in stable condition and the baby has tested negative. And most Chinese foreign nationals have now been banned from about 10 countries. That includes the United States. And a Chinese representative told the World Health Organization that all those measures are in overreaction. No Could that virus last until the 15th day and then they go and infect other people in these cities? It's just some things to think about. I don't want to dwell on that too long, but I want to include that in the video really quick so you guys are just aware that they are still bringing in Americans from Wuhan, except for now that they're quarantining them for the first, you know, 14 days. But remember last week when I did the video, there was no quarantine at all. They were just letting these people fly in into America, and now they're kind of all over the country and we don't know if they were infected, if they had the virus in their system, just like the person who ended up with the virus in Boston, Massachusetts. So even though they're trying to quarantine this 350 Americans that are flying in, what about the hundreds that flew in in January that weren't quarantined? So keep your tin hat tingling, stay woke, and I will talk to y'all later.